What is going on, guys? Welcome to another episode of the Natty Roundtable Podcast. I have my two usual guests, Connor and James, here. We also have another third um, guest on the on the roundtable, which I believe I think is going to be a very special episode for you guys, which is going to give you, myself included, a lot of value when it comes to specifics with natural bodybuilding because we actually are very happy to have on the on the roundtable uh, our first a guest besides ourselves, actually. Um, the actual vice president of the NANBF Natural Bodybuilding Organization. So um, his, his name is John Arnold, and I'm going to let him kind of do a little bit of talking here, introduce himself briefly, but um, I'm very happy to have him on the channel um, and, and on the podcast. So John, without further ado, man, tell him a little bit about yourself. Well, first of all, I'm probably 40 years older than most of all of you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, those are years of experience. We need to learn. Right. And... And honestly, I think I've been promoting as long as I think James is 24, right? Yep. Yeah, I was lurking on one of your other videos. <laughs> yeah. so, and this is my 24th year of promoting. Okay. So you, some of you guys weren't even born before we I started. Was not, so, I was not. I was two years <laughs> promoting for two years longer than I was alive. There you go. There you go. So I've seen a, a huge change, believe it or not, within the natural world, believe me. Um, I competed on the other side for six years, guys, and uh, uh, you know it was fun at the beginning, and then you get to the point where you really want to try to compete, and uh, that's where I discovered the NAMBA at the time, which is now the NAMBF, and uh, especially what it came down to was I found the show, I'm in, looking at a magazine, back when we had magazines, and uh, <laughs> now it's all e-magazine but anyway so <laughs> you look, i look in the back and I, I find a schedule i'm like oh my god there's a show in des moines iowa and i thought i'm not gonna do this thing so i go up there and it's like i found my family i mean obviously the competitors were more si you know, smaller in size more on my level and i had a great time and there was probably 50 competitors in that show if i remember right there, it wasn't too bad they, they'd been around for oh i think four or five years up north I had no idea they existed, to be honest with you. So, um, and then a few years later, they kind of dissolved, had some issues, came back as an NBF, and uh, then I competed with them after that, and uh, and actually met the president of the organization. It's, it's actually the 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 show was the Central Midwest, which is now the Natural Iowa. That was one of the original shows at NBF, and uh, the original original president was Scott Dickerson. And I told him, I said, you need to put a show in Kansas City so I don't have to travel. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense to me. Well, yeah, absolutely. So, um, so what happened was he, he came down and, uh, and, on, and and what it was, he asked me to see if I could find some venues for him. And I said, just keep it quiet. I don't want politics. Um, this is kind of the way we are, believe it or not, all the way from this point on. And, uh, and I said, absolutely. So I did some scouting around and he put on a show down here. It's actually at the same venue that we've been at for the last 24 years in Liberty. And um, so anyway, long story short, I went the show, he's pimping me about you know promoting it. And of course I'm like, oh, wait a minute, I wanna look at the pictures, I don't feel right about this. I you know, kind of was involved in it. But honestly, this is the whole agenda that I wanna kind of stress to down the line here. But mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I look at pictures, of course I had to wait till like next day. You know, you guys, we don't have, we didn't have, camera phones and all that fun stuff, you know? So uh, I had to wait the next day, look at pictures. And I'm like, okay, I'm, I feel good about this. And he kept bothering, he, he kept, he only called me a few weeks later and he, hey, I really, I'm serious about one. Have you promote the show? And I'm like, oh, I don't know. I, I had little kids at the time and whatnot. And, but I'll tell you what, here's the deal. Uh, for all those six years of competing, I'm backstage with a lot of obvious natural guys and they just felt like it was unfair. And I thought, okay, the reason why I'm going to do this is for those guys. And I thought, nobody else is going, if nobody else does it, it's never going to happen. I mean, I, I just had to step up to the plate. And that's really what it comes down to with natural bodybuilding. But you got to have a conviction to the whole idea of why you do it. And, uh, and in, my, in, my, in my situation, it's kind of like I, I know James is a soccer guy, college guy, right? Yep. Connor, you're a champion powerlifter and, and, and 
you were you were going to play football in college at 130 pounds yes, or something, right? Yes, sir. So, so <laughs> I mean, you always have reached a level of athleticism, all right? So now you're trying to find a new beginning down the line. But you all were pretty successful without it. And this is my thinking was I really I ran track in college. I ran Northwest Missouri State and I, I did pretty well. And I actually powered it as well. And, and I actually I won a, the uh, Kansas Open. So I had some success, too. And I thought, well, you know, but I did, just didn't want to go down that road. I, I, I knew too much about it. I guess I did. I'm more of an analytical person looking at all of the above. So but the main thing was, you know, I wanted to give guys a choice and women. And so that's, that was my, my mission, basically. And I'll tell you what, and I'll tell you, every one of the promoters in this federation, believe me, I know them very well. That's really right there in their heart. And, and you, you always hear about money, 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 and all that. It's not. It's not what it's about. I promise you. Because every, everybody that, that promotes with us has competed as well. So we've been in your shoes, and we understand. And uh, so that's, that's the reason why I got involved in it, to help you guys to give, give natties a chance and, and, a, and a choice, to be honest with you. And one of the two is the health, health issues. You know, I mean, you know, I'll tell you right now, at my age, believe me, I know a lot of people that did a lot of anabolic steroids, and there are issues. I mean, it's not life-threatening a lot of times, but it's just basically um, joint issues and that kind of thing. I mean, it's it's it can be there, there can be things long term. It all depends on how long you use it as well. But but uh, but there's all these reasons why I kind of got involved in it. And uh, but I tell you what, one thing it's it's super rewarding. And uh, to see it grow like it has, I'll, I'll tell you honestly, when we started, I'm going to say we had, what, 15, maybe 15 shows and at best, you know, and we're, we're over, way over double that. And we have, we didn't have any pro shows per se. Uh, you had a pro card, but you had to go east and west coast of different federations we were affiliated with. But, you know, now we're, we have, uh, within the IPE, we have like 13 with our affiliates of whatever. So, um, I'm telling you, what, it's it's a lot better, bigger, well organized than it ever has been, and uh, I'm just happy to actually be still doing it. To be honest with you, and uh, I love to see. I'll tell you what, honestly, I, I saw your group, and I contacted Connor. I said I would love to talk with you guys, and that's and, and that, I love what you guys are doing. That and that's exactly kind of segueing into what we kind of wanted you to to bring you on here for, really, because. The audience that I do have is younger. They're people who are trying yeah. to understand that natural bodybuilding even is a thing. Um, and it was something that I wouldn't have known if I didn't go on YouTube and find people who were promoting what they were doing, whether they were competing or whether they were just doing it as a lifestyle. And because I've, I, I don't know if you know or not, John, but I've never competed myself. Um, but the thing about that is, like I said, and like you were just mentioning, I think there's a lot of merit behind it besides just um the actual just natural bodybuilding itself there's so much more within that that i think really means a lot to people like ourselves where we do have those goals we have that athletic sort of mindset goal driven mindset but it really helps and i think like 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 i was mentioning having you on here is going to be a huge huge benefit to myself as well as the whole audience where we are going to learn a lot so um i think we do have a few um questions here james i know he asked his following about just kind of some things that people were wondering about um, like I said, probably things that I'm wondering about, and I have a few questions that I'll throw in there after um, James uh, asks you a few. But yeah, James, I don't know what you want to start out with here, um, but I think that that was, that was awesome, John. So, um, uh, James? Uh, yeah, so let's let's hook people in here so they don't walk out too early on us. Um, <laughs> one, of, one of the main questions that I've gotten <laughs> and questions that, you know, people wanted someone in power to answer is um, really how to best – pick what division they should compete in. Um, so, you know, you're a promoter, you've seen tons of athletes. Is there ever really, at least at the lower amateur levels, a wrong division for someone to choose? Absolutely. I mean, yeah, well, for, first of all, I, I've probably judged 150 shows. Mm -hmm. I've judged a lot of pro shows. And uh, I'm gonna tell you what it comes down to pretty much is very simple. Uh, it's all about symmetry. And it has to do with the size, not necessarily if you're really large, 
but it's more a symmetrical body. So, exa- for example, let's just face it. You know, when when you uh, when you're looking at say the male side, all right. If, you, if you're lacking in legs and you got a nice upper body, well, guess what? You go to physique. Mm-hmm. And if, if you feel like you want to ever get to a bodybuilding, you, at least you got somewhere to start. And then you work the heck out of your legs. And next thing you know, you might jump into classic or you might jump into to the to the bodybuilding side. And uh, this kind of in, in that in that realm, I'll tell you that right now. Um, and really on, on the natural side, and, and I'll tell you right now, one, one of the one of the issues we see right now is the classic. What, what's classic? It's and I know that's. <laughs> I've got a little note, classic. I want to explain to you how we differentiate it because it's been a big controversial issue. Mm -hmm. All right, so we looked at it and thought, okay, there's not that much disparity in the size of of natural athletes because you don't have the PEDs. So how do you you break that line? All right, so what we look at, first of all, okay, in in classic is you have to be symmetrical. Mm -hmm. I mean, you look at concert. The guy's symmetrical. He's not lacking really too much of a body part, except for talking about his arms the other day. But that's okay. <laughs> you know, when he's in his off season. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, but I'm working on him. Right. If you look at his his, his overall uh, symmetry, if you look at the silhouette, and that's really what symmetry really comes down to. Is a silhouette. If you can back all yourself and kind of look at yourself without seeing any kind of definition, there is your symmetry. And that's the first spot that we look for, and that's the main thing we look for in classic. Uh, leanness level, it doesn't have to be to a high degree. We do want to see some separation, of course. You know, when the fat guy up there with good symmetry, he's not going to win. But you got to be symmetrical. And you got to be kind of in symmetry also, it goes top to bottom in regards to leanness level. You see a lot of people who get, you know, lean really quick up top and they're kind of fat down the lower legs and whatever they're heavy. One, sorry to interject, but one question yeah. just uh, regarding that. So you're saying that is there a point in which you could be too lean for the classic division? You know, and that's and that's a good question. Not not really. I it mean, just depends on the look. You're you're it's you've all achieved. symmetry though. I see. You, no, you that makes sense. Shredded to the bone, and if you're missing a back or calves or whatever, it doesn't matter. Another guy has got you know he, he's showing some separation. But he not he may not be uh, striated. But he's got good se- separation, and he's he's perfectly symmetrical. You're not. He shouldn't beat that guy. Okay. That's how we've done this. That makes sense. So and, and so that makes it really hard for people to understand. Um, so yeah, can could a bodybuilder walk into classic and win? Yeah, if the guy's perfectly balanced and symmetrical. Sure. Uh, now what we what we've done though is. It's, say if someone wins in bodybuilding, the class, is we do live judging segments, and they, we actually do that the award segment, and then we'll go into the next one. Okay, so what we've done, we've decided we're, we're just going to – they win bodybuilding, that's only one pro card in that show. That's the way it goes. Oh, so you couldn't, you couldn't go both. for classic pro card as well is what you're saying. Right. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. So um, I guess my question for for you besides that would be, um, overall, when you are going into the the judging for the classic, I think that'd be a good thing to kind of touch on since that is a hot topic. What are some of the main differences you look at between a bodybuilding open class versus a classic physique? Um, I know there's some main differences with the posing and that sort of thing. I know that's probably one of James's questions. I'm stealing it from him, but that's kind of I guess I'm curious as well. Where where does that sort of main difference lie for someone? Um, if they're if they're kind of choosing, well, again, okay. in bodybuilding, of course, mm-hmm. you, you've got to be you got to be really really lean, top and bottom. All right, and preferably, we want to see a symmetrical body over there as too. You, you, but in classic, it's not a necess- necessary evil that be shredded. You really don't have to do that. And and when he's talking shredded people, he means shredded glutes. You're shredded. That's right. the other difference too. You're you're freaking peeled. I know these guys these guys know, but there's a lot of people who maybe are into natural body a little bit. These guys are peeled. When you're a pro, you are coming in peeled yes. in bodybuilding itself, yes. not classic. So yes. yeah, sorry, go ahead. Sorry to interrupt, but <laughs> well, in light of that too, it, I always tell people on the pro side, 
uh, the leanest level, it's pretty much across the board. You don't have to worry about that too much. Everybody's lean and pretty muscular. But when it comes down to is is, is the silhouette. It's it's the symmetry that really takes you over the top at the at the top level. You know, like the low level, that kind of thing. That's that's a big difference there. Now, when when you go over to the classic side, the symmetry is everything there, everything. So, in essence, what it comes down to, I, I'll tell you right now, what I see a lot of times is you see the peel guy over in bodybuilding, and and they'll step into, and I saw, saw this many many times in the last couple of years since we started this, where the bodybuilder goes over into classic and they get beat by a guy that maybe took third in bodybuilding, but he had really good symmetrical lines, but he, but he did, wasn't lean enough for bodybuilding. You follow me? So mm-hmm. the bodybuilder goes over, he's lacking calves, or he's, you know, he's a little weak somewhere, but the other guy's got his nice shape, he body, and he, he'll beat him. And that's happened several times. So it's really confusing, I understand, for some people to kind of see that. But this is the way we had to draw the line and, and try to make sure that there is, there is a separation, there's a difference. Mm-hmm. And I know, um, so stage presence is huge across the board, whether you're male, female, whatever division, but I, I, it's a trend I've noticed, and I don't know if it comes down to that's what the judges want, but maybe even a little bit more grace on stage with the classic guys, and then a little bit more intensity and aggression with the bodybuilding. And I know, like, you don't do the most muscular and classic because that's kind of a more aggressive, like, pose. Um, is that something that is actually looked at with the judging? You know, I'll tell you what, what, what it comes down for, I think, most judges, it's not necessarily a style and grace, per se. Um, it's more about actually posing to complement your physique. And, again, if you pose not symmetrical-like, if you want to call it, if you are bending your knees really far and, say, on the front side and, and you got your elbows down, they're not up, they're not like, you know, these kind of things, it can hurt you in your scoring. So I, I'm, I cannot stress enough, posing is really, really important. And uh, Connor's really good at it, by the way. If you guys, if you look at this guy. Taking some tips from him in my uh, side chest. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. And, and he's been to some seminars of mine too. But, uh, but what I'm trying to say is, is you can hurt yourself it hurt your symmetry by not posing it correctly or, or, or complementary to your shape and your body to who the judges see it. We have, we have a, a common phrase we say a lot, you know, we cannot judge what we can't see. Uh, I, I always talk about, you know, I'll walk, I'll walk backstage and I see competitors and I go, oh, that, that person's, they look like they're gonna knock this thing out of the park. And guess what? They come out on stage and destroy themselves. Because you, 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 know, you can't judge, like I said, what you can't say. So if you pose it well, then all of a sudden they're going, well, I obviously have more size and whatever, but some of the guy that was smaller ends up beating because they're a better poser. And they brought it to the judges in a better aesthetic view. It's so important. And... Uh, it's, it's sad to see that, to be honest with you. I mean, we do see that. And I'll tell you, I can't tell you how many times I've sat on a judge's staff and look up there and I go, I just swear I want to jump up on stage and wring a guy's neck or a girl. Because cause you know they have a good physique. You see them backstage. And honestly, they're walking around and they look better than the other person. It's kind of interesting. If, if you look at the the old school way that they used to judge in the Arnold days and whatnot, they didn't, when they did their quarter turns, they just kind of stood there. They just kind of turned. They didn't lad up. They didn't turn a little bit, you know, all these kind of things. And, and i tell you what, that's why Arnold was so good, because when Arnold just stood there, he looked better than anybody. <laughs> but today, it, it's really interesting. As I said, if you, if you had a show where you just walked in there and just stood there, he would win all the time. And that's really, really the reason why he, he did so well back in the day, too. Because that's the way they kind of pose their quarter turns or their symmetry around. A little different we do it today. But. 
That makes so much sense. I always say to people, and I, like I said, I've never competed, but I always say, I want to walk around, and when I just take off my shirt and I'm walking around, I want to just look like a guy who looks good. But then once I pull down, people will be like, what the hell? Like, what is, like, well, that doesn't look the same as it just did. Like, <laughs> which is so funny, because I'm always going to be like, because I'm tiny, but that's, it's, that's funny you say that. But, um, but no, this is awesome. I love this. Uh, James, what are, do you have any other questions? Uh, another one that was really interesting to me, and I know this is going to be different from my experiences versus Connor and you, John. Uh, someone was asking about the actual show breakdown and like how a show is run just for those people that are looking into competing. Yeah. So yeah. I'll start. I compete with the OCB, or at least that's what I have. Oh, man, it's happening again. No, it's okay. He's going to be fine. There you go. There you go. Good? There you yeah, go. you're good. Yeah. You've done OCB in the past. Yep. Yeah, so all the OCB shows are straight through, meaning all the amateur males are going to go through their symmetry rounds. You're going to do your uh, your pose down and all that to music. They're going to give you awards, and then you are done. There's no pre-show and night show. And I know that's very different from the NANBF and IP. So if you want to just talk that's, about that. No, no. That's really it's running format is what we do. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, we've been doing that. It was kind of interesting that you mentioned that. Um, not to say that Becky and I are kind of innovators, but what happened? <laughs> but you are. <laughs> well, I'm gonna say it was like 2004, somewhere around there, 2005. Well, what happened? We we actually outgrew our venue. We had our show got very large, and so when the figure hit, so we went to a Friday night show. Well, we had to be able to get in and out of there. You know, it's like 6.30 and get done in, say, four hours. So we had a little guy that was kind of helping us with our shows and whatnot. He was also, you know, an Excel wizard. And, and the guy came up with uh, basically a computerized tally system for us. So we were able to do that back then. And we didn't really understand that we were actually doing a live format show. And then people started talking about this. And I, I, I told Becky, I said, all we have to shoot, we just, we'll just put it within the rest of the, sh the show the next day. So we started doing live judging. God, it's been, I guess, five, six, five years ago now, six years ago. Wow. So we, we, and it, it slowly but surely, everybody else in the Federation started following suit. And we're pretty much every show now that way. But, I yeah. mean, from someone who's never really – like I said, not really into it too much. I I've always been confused why the why is it so. I mean, I get it that it's like do pre judging and then you go come back and it's like a night show and that's fun. But like I'm like why isn't pre judging at like three in the afternoon and then I can just take like an hour break and like I get the whole going to get the meal thing. But it's like it makes it's from like I said from my perspective and from anyone I've talked to about that, um, it makes more sense and it just seems more just cool, close drawn out, especially if you're far away or. Right. A lot of things that come into play. So I think that makes sense. Well, I'll give you the history on that real fast. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm sure there is. Some <laughs> yeah. Really what it was all about was, you know, we would do all the prejudging. Mm -hmm. and, and it used to be, too, a lot of times they would do uh, prejudging and in and, and a, and a quick uh, routine. And when we first started, we actually judged the routine. But the shows got so big and it took too long to do all that. They, like a hat, like a third, and then they come back at the awards night, and we do the full routine and with music and whatnot. But anyway, what that what that break was for actually was to do tally because we did it all by paper back in the day. Oh, so you just had to actually have time to yeah, we had a meeting together. We, we would to make judge would go into a, you know, a deliberation, <laughs> go into a room, yep. sit down, and we and we plug all of our numbers in. We'd have someone taking the numbers down. Then we had to add them all up. All that that was that period in time. Well, going again, backing up, we, we we got this computerized tally program. So essentially, you write down your number, you send it down the line, and someone then in, in the table just plug them in. Boom, they're done. Yeah, well, they send. If you ever, if you ever watch a show and you and you see the judges, when they, when they send that when they send that back to the judges, that that class has already been uh, figured in. Uh, okay. Done. Interesting. There's no changing. There's no. I'll tell you what. You know, if people think there's some kind of hokey pokey going on in regards to, to uh, numbers and placings, can't be done. It's pretty much the system we're doing right now. Interesting. That makes that a lot sense. of sense. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. James, you are able to do this now. 
Mm-hmm. Makes sense. Well, although, yeah, I was going to say, otherwise it, you'd have to still take some, some time at least, for sure. Um, we're, we're only about 30 minutes here, so I don't know if you want to do maybe one or two more questions, James, if you have any. Um, otherwise... Oh. Those were the main ones that I had. And ones? If I didn't ask it, we kind of hit on it in like yeah. a, a part of the question. So Perfect. if you guys I, have it, I, I, go I'd ahead. Say, well, I was going to say, Joe, unless you have some questions, I'd yeah. say, John, you might, after we're done with this, promote, man. Yeah. <laughs> say, so the, only, the only thing I was going to say besides that was, um, are there any like sort of, um, I think the only people that would really matter, but I think you kind of touched on it. Um, not really m- making much of a difference. If you did have a gap in between, like like the the, the past shows, is there any sort of um, people who are upset, like coaches, where they really have a lot of um, they like to play with what their, the look they're bringing, their their client is bringing to that night show because they might have more time versus like one judging and then bam, you're done. Like so, has there ever been any like gripes with that, or do you like I said, I guess I don't know enough. Are most of those shows kind of determined? without really having to go to that night show. Well, you know, no, don't determine, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter. Prejudging, it's all it's pretty much done. Okay, okay. Right, yeah. So so that's where th- that really isn't much other than you taking your pictures and doing your routine and how you're going to look for that. Your award ceremony. Okay, that totally makes sense. Entertainment yeah. value, pretty much. Yeah, no, totally, that makes sense. And that's where, I yeah, know that totally makes sense. But I think, yeah, that was the only other question I had. So, yeah, John, definitely do some promoting, kind of. Talk a little bit more. Give give the people some invaluable info. I don't know if you wanna whatever you wanna touch on. Whatever you think would be the most. Send them your info to the websites and and how to find shows. That Absolutely. Sort of um, you you can our show our first uh, our show Becky and I. It, it's April twenty seventh, twenty eighth. Uh, it'll be this coming spring, April. That's the first. It was actually the Diamond Show, I believe, in, in Oklahoma. It's a few weeks before that as well. That's when we can't kick off the season with those two shows. And of course, you can go to uh, www.nambf.org, and they have the, the 2019 schedule already set up. And um, we're, we're actually getting uh, entries already. Well, actually, last month, whatever, for the uh, our April show coming up. So, um, tell you what, there's been there's going to be a lot of new changes within the federation. Uh, I'll be honest with you, you're going to do a lot more uh, marketing, or whatever, trying to get more exposure for our athletes. Uh, amateur and pro. Uh, we've been doing a lot of live streaming. You can see a lot of that. We're going to be doing a lot more on YouTube this next year. Uh, that, that's one of the main emphasis we're trying to do because we understand that you know once you win, you also want some accolades and Instagram and whatnot. We we uh, we have a company we hired on to do all that kind of work for us as well. We're doing more and more of that. Um, our analytics are a lot better. And having years and years, and and I, I will say that we do have a, a new regime in place, and it's been just this last couple of years, actually last year, and we're all working hard. It's just a, you know a new take on it, and and we're trying to do the best we can for you guys. That's that's what we're, our main purpose is. Um, I, I think, um, but I do think there's a huge responsibility in the athletes themselves to take their part and and really help promote things and and things like myself where maybe I've never competed, but I definitely have. Like I said, I hold this close to my heart because it's 100% something that I stand for and and really am behind. So I think that in itself is something that a lot of people can. Alberto Nunez, he's a very very famous national bodybuilder. He's talking about. Albert. He's talked about many times. He's like people need to do their diligence to say, hey, no, this is a thing. Like, and you need to be. Kind of like not be not be ashamed of it essentially, um, because it is something that's really I think um, an awesome thing for for anyone like myself who's a past athlete looking to do something um, and and something goal oriented which has a good meaning behind it. So um, but yeah, is there anything else you wanted to touch on, John? I think that's perfect. Well, so another thing too, you know, yeah. we're we're all fragmented. We have a lot of like OCBs, WNBF, and all that, and and we always talk about unification. It's kind of a hard thing to do that because we have different uh, as far as uh, testing procedures and whatnot, you know, in classes and, and that kind of thing. Believe me, we would love to do that, but we, we have to come together as a group. And the more and more athletes like yourself do what you're doing right now, it's going to help that unification maybe happen down the line. I mean, that's, that's I, I can just tell you that right now. And uh, believe me, no matter, no matter what, you know, just – if you really, really want to compete as a natural athlete, you need to go to these federations and, and do it and, 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 and support them, believe me. And you guys are our best marketing. I mean, you're the ambassadors for what we do. 
you know, you're in the gym, you see a young guy, hey, compete natural. That's, that's really what you got to do. That's how we grow. Mm-hmm. But, uh, absolutely. No, I, I, I just have one thought. Yeah. So, if, yes, John, if, if you had like one sentence or like an elevator pitch for someone kind of like Joe's followers that are younger thinking about it, but they're on the fence, what, what are you going to say to them about, you know, should I, should I not? When is it right for them to do it? Let's put it this way. Young men and women, I competed till I was 54 years old at a high level, enjoyed every bit of it. And, and, to the, and today, right now, I enjoy great health. I mean, I, I can go to the gym. I'm lifting weights like I did strength level at 30 because my joints aren't a mess. You know, I love that. I've eaten, I've eating, I've eat, I eat the right foods. I do everything health wise. Not on any meds. I'm 62 years old. Enjoying life. I think that's an advertisement in itself. Yeah, I like else. it. No, I like it. I like <laughs> it. No, I think that's perfect. Like I said, um, thank you for thank you for your time, John. Honestly, um, Connor, James, thank you for your time. We're definitely gonna leave all the info as far as the website. Um, their Instagram, all social media, um, so you guys can find that below. Definitely take a look at some of the shows, see if there's any in your area that you could attend. Um, but honestly, guys, like I was mentioning, um, just just definitely go go and support this and, and see what it's all about and, and do your due diligence to learn because um, we can definitely have John back in the podcast if it's something where you guys have more questions because um, this is, like I said, very unique, and yeah, I think yeah. that um, it's something that we really can can all learn from, and I definitely learned a lot. So. Um, thank you once again, uh, John, and we will we will be hearing from you soon. And for Connor and James, um, thank you guys for watching. See you guys in the next one.